I'm no stranger to having deep conversations and needing to get to the bottom of the reasons why we're doing things. Uh, because that's the only way we're going to be able to change is to find out the reasons why. And I feel like we have been each other's therapists <laughs> <laughs> through this entire situation. Um, really going into like childhood traumas and talking about our parents' relationships, mm -hmm. talking about all of our influences growing up and how all of that made a difference uh, to how we understood relationships and how un we understood love, affection, um, communication, uh, the way we deal with a conflict. Like, it's, it's so crazy how everything really has to do with everything. Welcome back to Open Late. It's me, your host, Jessica Esfandiari, and this week I am bringing you a real life couple practicing non-monogamy. Yeah, it's always good to hear these stories. And these two are a riot. I can't even tell you how much fun I had in this interview. And there's really nothing I can say to intro them other than get ready, buckle up, because they've got some stories and they tell it like it is. And I appreciate it so much. Without further ado, and Jetty and Jorge. We listened to your first episode on our trip home to Pennsylvania. And I said, I wanted to start from the beginning because I wanted to know like, okay, how did, how did she get? Here? Because I feel like the way I got here was kind of like such a weird and unorthodox way kind of. And so I wanted to hear like, how does she do it? And so your accidental threesome and I'm like, okay, that's definitely one way I wish I could have gone. I like her way way better, but like, when you were exploring like your bisexuality and, and growing up very like religious and conservative and you saying when you were young, you were put in situations where you could have had like group sex mm -hmm. and you, okay, dude, that was literally me. I was like, yo, I was, like I kept cracking up and I kept looking at her. I'm like, Oh my God, this is me. Like she's talking about me. Yeah. <laughs> so many women have had a very similar experience. I think to us, it's like we, because we grow up in a way that that's like normal. That's like what kind of like kids do and teens do and college age, you just want to explore. But then you have this like, you know, it's almost like the two voices or like, you know, on your shoulder. Then you have this sort of like societal pressure or family pressure or just cultural pressure to, to be a certain way, to act a certain way, to perform a certain way. And I had so much of that that I couldn't allow myself to just be free and to do what I wanted to do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Likewise. Very, yeah. very. It really, I met Jorge where he, he really pushed me out of like my limits and like my comfort. I was trying to do it in my single life. Um, but it wasn't until him expanding me so much to like safety, giving me the safety and security of being like, Hey, you can be free here and mm. you're so lovable. Yeah. Wow. So, okay. Were you, ex so were you exploring, trying to explore non-monogamy on your own before you two met? Yeah. So I'm divorced mm -hmm. and I got divorced when I was 28 and I was single for three years. I had, you know, my stints of boyfriends, um, but nothing like no engagement or anything like that. Nothing too serious. And as soon as like, it would get serious with a guy like long term, like after six months, I would then like find attraction towards somebody else and be like, Oh my God, like, I think I want to cheat. Mm. I fight the temptation. Cause I, I never believed in cheating and cheating because again, I was shamed and I was like, no, you as, as a girl, you can't cheat. You know what I mean? Did but you I feel like if you were a man, you could have? No, I think like, that's my mentality that I had. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm a girl, so, like, I really can't cheat in this situation because I'm going to get in trouble. Like, girls are not, you know, men are not supposed to, no one, is, no one is supposed to, supposed to, but, like, it's more forgiving with men, I feel like, especially because we are from the Latin culture, and in the Latin culture, it's so common that you, as a woman, you're going to get cheated on. Sooner or yeah. later, you're going to get cheated on. Your husband's yeah. Gonna and it's, like, it's... It, maybe not more acceptable, but it is, you said, I think, I think you use the term forgiving or yeah. yeah, it's like more forgivable or it's just more expected 
that mm-hmm. a man is going to do it. And as a woman, it brings a bit more shame. That's, I have a similar, yeah, like upbringing and thought that you do in that. Okay. Yeah. So you never cheated, but you had desires to be with other people, even if you okay. were in a committed relationship. I, I up with them and then like the same night, like be with somebody else. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I definitely, and I would like keep a rotation of men. Like I definitely would, oh, I would always have like a bunch of people that I was dating at the same time. So I guess you could say I was exploring solo polyamory without actually knowing what it is, like what the fuck am I actually doing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And Jorge, what about you before the two of you met? So before we met, I did cheat in my relationships. Uh, and not to say that it was I was heartless because, you know, I was, sometimes I did lose really good people in my life, you know, through my actions. And I got to a point where I was like, okay, I'm going to at least tell people what I want. Like, hey, I am like, you know, dealing with some other people here and there. Like, even when I met in Jetty, I did tell her that I was seeing some other people mm-hmm. and having sex relationships with other people and just trying to maneuver my life in that way just because I wasn't educated on ethical non-monogamy the way I am. Uh, So when we got together, I did express to Anjeti um, after we got into a monogamous relationship and made it official that I did want to engage with other women. And she didn't react to it well. And I did bring it up, you know, a few times. Um, and she just never really reacted to it well and was open to it until later on. And I feel like it was almost too late when Mm she started to open her mind a little bit, just because Mm -hmm. I've gotten to the point where she was crying and she was so emotional over it. And I didn't want to see her, uh, react to my urges in that way anymore. I was kind of, um, tired of expressing myself openly because I felt like I was really hurting my partner's feelings. Okay, got uh, it. I ended up going behind her back like I did in relationships prior, and she found out about it. But the, what the turning point was in this relationship and other relationships was uh, she took two days to herself. And then she uh, came back to me, and she was the one that actually wanted to sit down and watch some videos on YouTube about people who were in relationships mm-hmm. uh, to help um, open our minds and try to figure out if there was something wrong with me, you know, uh, her kind of getting, um, a verification that nothing was wrong with her, you know, (laughs) it was kind of like all of those realizations going on at the same time when we kind of brought up the topic of ethical non-monogamy and making it, you know, uh, we're talking about if we would want to even make that like a possibility with our relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm. Isn't it wild that the first initial thought or like gut reaction, you know, as a woman too, because I have the same experience, so I can only speak to like, you know, sounds like very similar. It's like, there must be something wrong with me or you. If you want something that doesn't resemble this, you know, traditional, and I'm I'm using air quotes for all my listeners, uh, traditional, normal relationship style that we're all supposed to fit into, right? This like monogamy. Um, And I'm just commenting on it because I had a very similar, even though I wanted it, it was like, I didn't want anyone to find out because I was like, oh, they're going to they're going to know I'm weird or I'm a bad person or like I'm a sexual deviant or something, which is like yeah. not the case. But that's, I, I just, I appreciate the honesty and you sharing that that was like the first thing where, you, you know, and Yeri was like, is there something wrong with me? There's got to be something wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> cheated on. Mm-hmm. So this was the first time that I have ever been cheated on. And this is a man that I... I thought he was really in love with me. I'm really in love with him. We have a great relationship. He's taken on um, the stepdad role. So it was just shocking because I'm like, wait a minute. I think we have a really good, solid relationship and a very sexy, healthy sex life. And, you know, not to toot my own horn, but like, I know what I look like. Yeah. (laughs) I was just so confused. And it was such a shot to my ego. Mm. in a way that I've never, 
I had an ego death. I had an ego death. Yeah. What was the turning point? Like what had you say, okay, you know, I heard Jorge say you took two days to yourself. Like what was the aha that had you say, okay, let's look at this from, let, like, let's do some research. Mm-hmm. Let me educate myself. Maybe I can open my mind to this. Mm-hmm. Like, where did you go to kind of come up with that? <laughs> That's a really good question because, so I consider myself um, a witch. I'm very mm-hmm. witty. I'm very mystic. So I, I can read tarots. I can be tarot. And I went away for to Lancaster, actually. <laughs> yes, girl. Hometown. There. Yes. Um, I was yeah, I was gone for like three days and two nights, three days. And um, I was in Lancaster and I I'm pretty sure that I was like in a haunted uh bed and breakfast because, well, for starters, they told me it was haunted. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was like, you know what, fuck it. Like, this is the perfect place for me to like get some answers. So I'm reading my tarot and I got the eight of swords. Hmm. Automatically. I was like, if, if you know tarot, you know, damn well, that's the cheating verification card. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And I just sat with myself and I had a conversation really with myself where it was like, girl, you know, you're not surprised. Hmm. Like, you know, that this was coming. He, he showed you who he was you manifested him and you're just the same as he is. The difference is you don't have the, I don't want to say like the balls, Mm -hmm. like it does take balls to cheat. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? It takes even bigger balls to do what he did, which is tell you early on, like, Hey, I, I love you and I want to be with you and I want to be with other people, which is also takes big balls. (laughs) Yeah. Actually, he told me a few times. Yeah. So I had like a coming to Jesus session with myself and where I kind of had to just face my own reality of this is a situation that you knew was going to happen. You manifested this and now you're either going to have to grow from this because you're here are your two options. I can either take the route where I say, fuck you. You didn't love me. You don't deserve me. Men are trash. I'm never going to trust anybody ever again. And I'm going to have to break the sad news to my daughter that the man the mommy was wasn't the right one. I had all, like, that was the one route. And that's the route that most women will take. Yeah. You know? Actually, I think I had three routes. The second route was you can forgive him and pretend like this never happened and we can, like, shove it under the rug. Because that's another, that's another route, like, that a lot of women will take. Yeah. Like, oh man, like he is a great man and he does make my life easier and he's a great father figure. Um, so yeah, let me just forgive this one mistake and then right. we'll sh- I don't ever want to talk about it again. And and let's just keep doing the same thing that didn't work before and expect right. a different result. Right. I'm really happy that you like kind of pointed out this this other route as well. Because yeah. it's so important and that is what the majority of the other road people will take. Or the, the majority of people will take this other road and they only see these two ways. Mm-hmm. But you saw a third way. I saw it and it was the scariest way. I was like, Ugh. but I knew what was behind that door. It was me facing my fears, my triggers, my shadows, my inner child hot traumas, everything with him by my side and realizing like, wait a minute, I kind of want the same things. I do want to explore with other people. I do want to explore my bisexuality that I've never had the chance to really do that before in a relationship. Um, the idea of him being with other women kind of turns me on because yeah. I was more upset about him lying and keeping the secret than like him actually like having sex with another girl. Right. Like it was the lying in the secret that really like that really fucked me over. Like the sex part, I was like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just like, don't lie to me. Yeah. 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 Oh, I went with the third route. Amazing. And so how did you move forward from that point on when you came back together? Girl, <laughs> it was hard. I was so mad at him. Because here's what they don't tell you about, like, getting cheated on or this 
big wake up call in any relationship is you actually go through grief, Mm -hmm. grief period. Because as much as I knew that I loved him and I wanted to be with him, my ego was so hurt. Mm. And my spirit too, in a way, my spirit was like, (laughs) you know what I mean? It's like all shaken up and like, it was, it was a lot. It was a lot of emotions. Um, I kind of, we kind of buried, barricaded each other into our apartment for like a week and a half Mm -hmm. where we just kind of sat and talked and cried. And I, I needed all my questions answered. Yeah. So you went through the ringer, right? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I was open to it though. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, I'm no stranger to having deep conversations and needing to get to the bottom of the reasons why we're doing things, uh, because that's the only way we're going to be able to change is to find out the reasons why. And I feel like we have been each other's therapists (laughs) through this entire situation. Um, really going into like childhood traumas and talking about our parents' relationships, Mm -hmm. uh, about, you know, their sexual relationships talking about all of our influences growing up and how all of that made a difference uh, to how we understood relationships and how we understood love, affection, um, communication, uh, our triggers, uh, the way we deal with a conflict. Like it's, it's so crazy how everything really has to do with everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's all tied in together and it's Mm -hmm. all sort of, influencing how you will respond or how you'll react, right, in these situations. So, okay. So you decide that you want to, like, go down this road. It sounds like you do the healing work. You block off that time and you really gave yourselves, you know, that space to to do the ugly crying that we all love and, and grieve. And it's like you're also grieving the previous relationship that you had. That- Yes, yes. I was grieving like my my fantasy of my my monogamy. I was grieving monogamy because I knew that I could never have monogamy again if I wanted to Jorge. But I also knew that like even if I broke up with Jorge, I wouldn't want monogamy with any other man. Yeah. I knew that too. That's powerful. Now, when it comes to like grieving, everybody has um, you know, different Needs when it comes to like this is how much time I need or like you know I don't really need that much time to grieve on things I kind of get over things really quick I'm very uh explorative I'm ready to like you know like we grieved for that week and a half you know we tied it we locked ourselves in the apartment but after that we dived into like some deep waters really quick <laughs> <laughs> so you did you jumped into the deep end no raft which is what I tell people to not do the exact yeah. opposite <laughs> Oh, yeah. Do you go like right to a sex party? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, yes. Yeah. Here's Club. Too long, but I think the, 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 first, the first thing we did, which is which was which was wild, like oh, yeah. you know, was the the girl that I cheated with was somebody wasn't somebody oh, random. Oh my god! Mm. Somebody that I knew for a long time. Okay. And I really did have uh, a lot of feelings for this person. So we actually, I, I wanted to like you know, I knew that. This was the only person that I really had this kind of like chemistry with or like relationship with that we both like brought out something bad in each other, like in in a way Mm. where we like keeping secrets, you know, and it's like I needed to get rid of that. And I feel like the best way for me to do that is for like to everybody be in a room to talk about it. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) This was like a karmic love for Jorge. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so we did get together and we spoke, we spoke on the phone first and then it was probably like, maybe like a few weeks until we actually met in person after that. And, um, it it was, it was, it was wild. We actually, I asked her if she wanted to watch me and Jetty have sex. (laughs) And she said, and, uh, well, it was kind of weird, but. She I, she eventually said yes, <laughs> and then and that happened. Yeah, so we had sex in front of her. I actually ate her ass for the first time in front of the girl that I cheated on her with. <laughs> and you're shaking your head like, was it not good? <laughs> no, it, it was so much, Jess. It was just, 
so much. At this point, I don't even know who I am. <laughs> yeah, you're like one minute I'm in this committed monogamous relationship. I get cheated on. And now I'm in this room. <laughs> this woman is watching my partner go to town on yeah. me. Yeah, you know, and I, I don't like, if there's anybody who could convince two women to do that, it's him. This <laughs> yeah. gentleman. I don't know. Like, he's got some special powers that, like, come out sometimes. But we did that. Um, and um, I I guess, I don't know. I guess I was just like, fuck it. Like, throw caution into the wind. Like, the worst has already happened. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? um, and she seemed down for it. Like, she, she seemed like, you know, she... It was weird. Like, she, a part... She kind of seemed like one part, as part of her was like sad about it, but not really. And another part was like more like she was, she was like, like it is what it is. Yeah, like, she, yeah. she was, she was almost like she was like, I can't believe this is even happening. Yeah, <laughs> what was your motivation? I was like, and, and me, it's I'm, I'm an all loving person. Like, if I can, if I can, like, you know, convince everybody to just have sex with each other, that would be great. <laughs> be loving on each other like why is everybody like why why are you looking at this person like shut up just you know give them a kiss <laughs> oh that's how i am like i just want everybody to just love each other <laughs> he does he, he's a very he's like a puppy dog so okay so I'm, I'm understanding a little bit your your motivation was like if i can bring everybody together in the same room and there's play that's like pleasure inducing then I can maybe create some healing out of this experience that was harmful. Right. But you know, yeah, so I, that's I, a good way to put that it. That is a really good yeah. way to put it. What, yeah. what, 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 what the actual thing was that kind of fixed everything was when I kind of felt the difference in their energies through that experience, I realized that, okay, she, I, I felt like I was starting to see all the bad intentions. Like she really didn't want to see her happiness, you know. She didn't. She didn't have that. What's that word? Compersion. Um, compersion. You know, for for her. It was more. Like yeah, it was jealousy, and it's like I. That was something that I started to feel like in that in that moment, and then that point on, I started to feel those same feelings, and I realized that I needed to cut that person off. Mm. Even about them, and I knew them for a long time. Mm-hmm. I don't want to have anybody around that doesn't have genuine um, love for for just like people and for everything. Like you were a part of the cheating experience, also. Like you knew that I was in a relationship with her, and you had met her before. Mm-hmm. Like, so you know, yeah, we were friends on Facebook. So for you, for for you to not have like <laughs> genuine, um, like, uh, like feel to feel genuinely sorry about everything, and I can feel that, then I don't really want to be around you. I see. Okay, so this is a big turning point for you then. So this is you sort of making a shift from feeling like you have to hide and, you know, and be break trust, right? Break those like boundaries, moving into a space of like, okay, if everything's going to be out in the open, then I also want to make sure I'm only engaging with people who are fueling that love and the honesty. Right. And the, and, the connection. Um, I always, I, I talk about that and I, I just call it like, you know, people who are going to generate energy rather than draw energy away, which yeah. is a really cool thing that you realized early on. It sounds like at the very beginning of you stepping into non-monogamy. That's yeah. a big turning point. Yeah. I definitely wanted to give her a chance because of the history that they had and because I tell how much he really liked her and was into her. I mean, he did say, he's like, you know, I do love her. Like, I don't love her on the level that I love you, but I have love for her. Mm-hmm. So to me, I'm learning about polyamory. I'm learning about ethical non-monogamy. I'm learning about all these things. And I'm thinking like, oh my God, like my partner is telling me that they love this other person. He's known her way longer than he's known me. Somehow they just never ended up in a relationship. But like, I just felt wow, like, who am I to want to take this person away from him? For the first time in my life, I was acting very, very, like, selfless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah. But, it was, but I really, 
give her a chance. And I guess that's why I allowed her to come into our house, you know, say her piece, which really wasn't much. And then I just caught on to little things. And again, it goes back to like my, my intuitiveness. I'm very in tune with people's energy. And I just, there were things that I, I found out that she was lying to me about. And mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't even know why she's lying about these things when I know the truth. And then more and more little things started happening where she was showing like her true colors. And I'm like, yeah, no, this person doesn't really want this like thruple situation that Jorge wishes that he could put us in. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm doing, but I know Jorge wants a thruple situation. Just call it, just say, call it for what it was. Um, I was at least trying to just have like <laughs> open lines of communication. Yeah, you were. Just like, you know, yeah. Other before yeah. anything, I wasn't trying to rush into a throuple. <laughs> Whatever, George. Yes, like, I, yes. <laughs> I, I like like most I, men. I, so it's I, it's it's okay. I genuinely believe, genuinely believe that that was going to be possible. <laughs> yeah. So it sounds like you realized, okay, this is not the person, and what a great learning lesson. Because now moving forward you have this as a baseline for like what types of people you want to engage with either together or even, you know, separately. So it's kind of my next question because it's like on every listener's mind right now, or at least most of the people listening I know are thinking, okay, from there, now do you start dating people separately? And Yeti, are you dating other men? Are you bringing other men in for threesomes? Like, what's the dynamic and how do things evolve? So after after that, it was the um the Facebook group, and then we met the guy. What? I don't want to say his name. Oh, what's what's the that. Facebook group? Name. It was uh, Swingers of Pennsylvania. <laughs> oh, there's a Facebook group. What? Yeah. Me being from PA and I don't even know about this. I'm actually not on Facebook, so. There's a Facebook group for all the swingers of every state. This is amazing. Everyone (laughs) listening, when you write in and you're like, there's no one in my state or my city that is like me, here you go. There is a Facebook group for people just like you in every single state. I love it because you you really can find people – that are like-minded everywhere. You just have to know where to look. So, okay, you joined the Facebook group. Yeah, and- but no, our our first experience was a threesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You always- we did have, we had yeah. the girl first. And then- <laughs> yeah. And then- so, um, yeah. So, what I wanted to do more than anything was dive into my bisexuality. Right. I'm like, okay, I really want to explore women. Like, you know, yeah, men are cool. I've had my I've had my fun with men, but like, I really want to enjoy a woman and I did have the fantasy of a threesome but I had never had one with a partner before but um yeah so that's that's the next thing we did I I was more he was letting me kind of take the lead he was more like okay well what what do you want like what do you want to try like now that we're open like what is it and I was like threesome yeah <laughs> I like I like girls and I really want to like have fun with girls whether it's with you or without you but like girls please like that's just that's where we where we went next were you meeting the other women via the facebook group no so yeah i don't know i don't know why <laughs> ignore the facebook group right yeah. now <laughs> i forgot i forgot that didn't come until later yeah so my memory is so bad it's so bad i don't know why you try to answer the question <laughs> <laughs> you can like cut all that out <laughs> so Jorge is really lucky because he's a videographer and the majority of like his clients are rappers. And what do rappers have in all their videos? Hot chicks. Yep. (laughs) Video babes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he knows like a lot of um, video vixens and Mm -hmm. and video girls and stuff like that. And so there was this one girl in particular that I had met on one of his music video sets and she really seemed like she was into me. And then nothing happened. It was just like some flirting, but this was what, this was before we were opened. Um, and then, you know, we just started following each other on Instagram. We ended up going to her birthday party and at her birthday party, she was drunk and she told me that she liked me, like looked me in the eye, pulled me real close and was like, Hey, I'm really into you. And I was like, oh, what do I do? <laughs> Did you get nervous? Oh, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so when we were thinking about like threesomes, we're like, okay, well, so who would we do it with? And that's when 
I brought her up and he was like, oh yeah, for sure. And we went to go visit her. We talked to her about it. She was so excited. She's like, oh my God, yes. Like I'll be honored. <laughs> and we went to her job, got some drinks. And right before, as we're about to head home and go do the threesome, I have a mental breakdown. <laughs> yes. I know this because I listened to your your show, which I think is what you're about to talk about. But please yeah. share because I think this is so important for people listening. This is everyone's biggest fear before they really dive into like the first, you know, threesome or the first act is like, I'm going to freak out and get jealous or feel insecure. Um, so yeah. walk us through. I didn't see it coming. I honestly didn't because I was really excited. I was really happy. I was I was feeling like so sexy. We him and I had like, oh my god, we had crazy reconnecting sex. Like we were constantly like having sex every it was crazy. Like the cheating afterwards when we reconnected, we it propelled like our attraction to each other. So I was feeling so close to him and then we were flirting with her, you know, as she was flirting back. Everything was such a good vibe, but I don't know if maybe it was like the alcohol or the anxiety or all the other things that I started to spiral in thought. And I started thinking to myself, bitch, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you doing? Like, stop this. Like, are you sure? Are you sure? Like, you know, all these voices, all these intrusive thoughts in your head that want to take over and they want to shake you up, but it's just fear. Mm -hmm. that's the first thing you need to know like that is just fear talking um and telling you like oh my god but like what if he enjoys having sex with her more than you like what if they hit it off like what if he goes and cheats with her later there was literally just so many intrusive thoughts coming in yeah and I was just like freaking out and Jorge at this point he's just kind of like oh my god what the fuck do we get ourselves into <laughs> But forget this. He's like, we're going to cancel. And I was like, no, we can't cancel. And he's like, and Jetty, she's going to be in the car any minute now. She's <laughs> <laughs> like, we're literally on her block. <laughs> we're outside her workplace. Waiting for her oh. to get <laughs> Oh, my God. Okay. So it, the meltdown happened, like, lasted about 10 minutes. And it really took a lot of patience from Jorge to calm me down and tell me like, I'm not going anywhere. I am here with you. I love you. I'm committed to you. I'm staying with you. Like we're just having fun. If you don't want to do this, we won't have to do this and we'll cancel and I'll still go home with you and be happy to have you. Yeah. You know, like he said, I don't know. He said a lot, like things like that. Yeah. He um, validated, validated your emotions and yeah. You know, it sounds like created safety, like recreated that baseline of like safety and trust. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He really did. He didn't, um, you know, he didn't gaslight me and was like, oh my God, like you're crazy. Like, yeah. Look, yeah and like, oh my God, I knew we shouldn't have done this. You know what I mean? He didn't do any of that. You know, I he was like upset, but then he quickly kind of made the realization like, wait a minute, hold on. I just need to like be here for her and hear mm -hmm. her out. And he did. And I was able to calm down and she got in the car and I don't think she noticed anything. <laughs> uh, nice. Yeah. And you know, it's like a lot of times, so if you, if you didn't express that, like if you had all those thoughts and like held them in, mm -hmm. it likely would have come up for you either like after you're with her, like when you guys all go home together, you might've had the meltdown like in the middle of like getting it on. No, it's so cute. Oh my God. Is that a yellow lab? Uh, in, an English lab. He is so cute. Or she. It's a he. Monty. Monty. I love. <laughs> I have a lab pit mix. Um, but yeah, you likely would have either had that meltdown there and or it would have festered and then came out later. So right. it's so beautiful that you, A, felt like you could actually, you know, turn to, to you, Jorge, and be like, I'm freaking out. And yeah. express all of that because fear and emotions that, you know, will follow up fear, like all these uncomfortable emotions, they just want to be heard. They yeah. just need space to like express themselves. And so many times, like once you just say it mm -hmm. and say, this is what the fear is, this is what's going on in my mind, like 
I don't have to subscribe to it. I just need to get it out of me. And then you can kind of move on. It'll dissipate. Um, That's like what I always want everyone listening to understand because I think like when we have such a big fear or such a big emotion that takes over our state of being, we think like this is a permanent thing and I'm always going to feel this way. And that's just not true. No. Mm -mm. No, it, it can get really crazy if you let it. And I also, I'm, I'm happy that I didn't take it. So sometimes people will hear these intrusive thoughts and the fear come out and they'll take it as a sign that they shouldn't be doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They'll be like, Oh no, this is a sign. I'm not meant for this. I can't handle this. Like, no, I'm not strong enough. And then, Oh, wait a minute. Hold up. That doesn't mean that like what you're doing is wrong or that you shouldn't be doing it. It just, like you said, it just wants to be seen. It wants to be heard. Yeah. It means it's something brand new and you have no roadmap for it and you have, you know, no baseline because you've never done it before. So it's like anything brand new. It's like you go in for a new job that like a lot of the skill set, you know, you don't really have solid yet. And like, you're going to learn a lot on your feet or like a brand new environment, a new relationship where you're going to have fears, right? You're going to have um, these awarenesses pop up that you don't have the experience that you wish you did so you could know what to expect and feel comfortable and feel certainty. And that is not available to you. So you're in freak out mode. So it's like anything else. And I just love what you're saying because it doesn't mean it's a no. It means you just got to get your bearings. And so it's nice to hear it and to like give it space, but then also to move forward, stepping outside your comfort zone little by little. And did you have a great time? Like how did, what went down? Was it positive experience? What did you learn from it? It was so fun. It was such a positive experience. I felt so lucky. We, we went home with her and we sat and talked to her for like an hour before like any type of play even happened. And we all discussed like, we told her this is our first threesome. We've not done this before. And she said, well, this would be like my second one. The first one, I didn't have a good experience because I felt like the couple was kind of using me and they didn't make me feel good. There was like no aftercare. And we're like, yeah, okay. So we're definitely not doing that. Like you are important here. You know what I mean? Yeah. We are taking your needs into consideration as well. Like we want you to have just as much fun. And so we just kind of me and her started making out, and um, I don't know where Jorge went. I think he wants to, like, go get drinks or go to the bathroom. I don't know where men go, like, in the- <laughs> He's like, I'm going to remove myself for a moment and let this thing sort of, you know, bubble up, maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, he left for a minute, came back with something, maybe condoms. <laughs> um, we had a great time. Everybody came. We had a great time. And we actually ended up having a few more threesomes with her and even traveling with her. Beautiful. I've had, yes, that's like the best. Mm -hmm. So it was a really good sort of beginning of, you know, your non-monogamy with Mm -hmm. someone who was safe and sounds like a great person who is also feeling like, you know, reciprocal, like love and respect from you guys and, you know, equal care. I love it. Definitely. It was it was really good. And after we had the threesome, like the next morning, I felt like I could take on like anything. I felt like I was on top of the world, right, babe? I was like, babe. No, really? <laughs> so good. Like, oh my God, like who am I? Yeah. Empowered. Yes. I felt really empowered. Because so now that we've done the girl thing, um, you know, we've had a few threesomes now. Uh, we realized like, okay, you know, may I realize like okay, maybe I want to explore with men again. You know, there's some cute men out there that I might want to talk to. I don't know, you know? Mm -hmm. And we happen to be going on a trip to Florida where Jorge's, like, shooting some, like, fake documentary of these, like, big booty girls and their mans on a beach trip. (laughs) (laughs) And on the plane ride there, Jorge sat next to the hottest guy on the plane. And I told him that. Um, <laughs> and so he's like, okay. And he got his Instagram, he got his number and the guy was there for a volleyball tournament and like picture this, like 
six three, like real fit, Cherokee Indian, Native American type of dude. Mm -hmm. Air. I mean, we'll send you a video. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god! Like I was, I yeah. I was like, all right, yeah, babe, like help me out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're feeling yeah. it. You're like, okay, <laughs> drooling. <laughs> yeah. No, okay. I, I, I guess I do still like men. Mm -hmm. um, so we ended up doing our little, you know, documentary with the girls. And when it was time to leave, we went to another Airbnb. And our host was really interesting mm -hmm. because he ended up, like, being our Lyft driver. So... <laughs> giving us our rides he's telling us about the fire that he had when his two daughters were little and his wife died in the fire and his other daughter died in the fire as well and he said however out of that fire i turned to sex and alcohol and my wife had this sapien machine it's like this 1500 dollars sex machine and it was damaged in the fire but the company had heard about it, or I don't know what he maybe he filed a claim. I don't know, but they like brought him a new Sabian machine. They like send him a new, brand new machine with brand new parts and everything. So he would go to Craigslist, and he would put ads out for women to come and ride with their consent this machine. And all he wanted was to just watch them ride the machine and have the world's best orgasms. Yeah, he said he would get hundreds of women who would come from the ages of like eighteen to like 67. Wow. And he said a lot of times, yeah, I would just, they would come, ride the machine a few times, you know, and stumble home. I wouldn't even talk to him. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't even talk to him. I'm like, like, okay, thanks, peace, I'm good. <laughs> thanks for the orgasms. Yeah. Yeah, and he's like, you know, a few times they would want me to play with them, um, but he's like, but for the most part, they just come, enjoy themselves, and, and I love it. And so <laughs> when he dropped us off at the beach on the way to meet Michael, I was like, babe, I want to ride that Sapien machine. Yeah. Is he going to let us use it? Yeah. He offered. He offered. <laughs> so, you know, we go to meet Michael and we're like, all right, cool. So like, if things don't pan out with Mike, then we know what we can do. Yeah. You know? <laughs> we have a backup plan. We do. We have a backup plan. So, um... Things didn't pan out with Mike because there was like another girl there who was giving me like very territorial vibes. When I came around, she just kept kind of like giving me like the side eye. And I just know, you know, as a woman, you know, when another man is like taken, like, especially if you see like a woman there and she's like, yeah, you know, just giving the vibes. Yeah. So I told Jorge, I was like, babe, I don't think it's not going to work out with Mike because I'm not stepping on nobody's toes. I'm not fighting no girl. Like, you know what I mean? I, this was fun, whatever. We had a couple, you know, a couple drinks with them. It was cool. But I really just want to go back and. Yeah. And he's like, All right, let's do it. <laughs> and um, we took a few shots and I called up William. That was his name. I called up William and I was like, William, pick us up because we're ready. <laughs> and he came, he picked us up from the beach. We were drunk and um, he had cleaned the machine for me. He had it all ready to go at his shed out back in his backyard. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> okay. Dude, Jess, by the way, it's on my OnlyFans. Okay. But I can, I'll go, I can send it to you for free. Don't worry. We are going to link that in the show notes so everyone can subscribe to your OnlyFans. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you can see this video of me in this guy's shed. Um, picture. So here's William. Picture like a 55-year-old Florida dad with like flip-flops and like a fishing t-shirt. <laughs> I love this image. Florida man. Okay. Um. And he, he just sat there and controlled it. He had the controls and I sat on it. It's like a straddle. It's literally like a horse straddle. And we were drinking, smoking a little weed. It was so much fun. I came <laughs> twice. I was just in, it was insane. It was insane. Jorge was there playing with me and William just watched and controlled the device. Yeah. Okay. Now, how is this for you, Jorge? Are you... Like, is it uncomfortable for you to have him there? 
So that was our first time uh, with like a guy around. Mm -hmm. So it was interesting, but he wasn't like engaging with her. Really, had I didn't feel like too. Cool. You know, I was yeah. like, All right. he's controlling the remote. She's about to be here, like coming all crazy off of this machine. <laughs> I'm a little lit. <laughs> Take a video. I was the cameraman. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you had a job. You were like uh, occupied. I was good. Yeah. I was recording everything. Great. I didn't feel like I'm comfortable. Um, yeah. Because I know that's the question like on every listener's mind. Um, or maybe not everyone, but a lot of people. They're like, okay. You yeah. know, it's, it's, it's so much more acceptable, I think, in society to like imagine these threesomes with two women and one man right if we're just speaking in the the binary men and women but anything else that's like two guys and a girl or anything else just brings up a lot more like oh how is it for the guy like are you jealous are you territorial um right because there's so much ownership in the traditional monogamy um so it's cool that you had this like stepping stone too, because it sounds like it's not like he's very engaged physically with her, even though he's controlling the remote. <laughs> so like, it's like in a remote way, he's very engaged. Um, and he's, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. So it's great. It gave you this like space, this stepping stone to get sort of comfortable with it. And then, um, sounds like another great experience. So you like integrate that and kind of like put that in your tool belt and you're like okay cool we did this we did this um yeah. I guess I, what I go ahead what were you gonna say um I forgot to mention this about the meeting with Michael on the beach because I was very attracted to Michael and when he came over to talk to us and he <laughs> left again because he said he was gonna go in the uh, big blue thing called the ocean he looked at me and he goes were you turned on by him yeah. And the I thing about like, the thing about this guy is he was very spiritual and like smooth and like he didn't stutter. He like was very confident. He was a personal trainer, so his body was like perfect. He was just like he had really like he had a man bun with like long hair. Mm. So he all that, you know what I mean? So so like he just kept on like giving us attention. <laughs> right. And so and like I looked at her and she was like staring at him yeah i could really like fantasizing <laughs> yeah so, uh, so yeah are you feeling self like insecure yeah so so mind you when she told me on the plane that she that he was hot or whatever we never really talked at that point about like at, it was at this moment right here where we're already on the beach and then she's, I see her looking at him and that, so are you attracted to him? And she was like, that's when she was like, what? I was like, are you turned on right now by Mike? And like, I kind of caught her off guard. Mm -hmm. and I was she was like, she was like, yeah, I am. And I was like, so do you want me to ask him if he'll have sex with you? I was like, are you crazy? <laughs> Boy, you are so crazy. Yeah, because we never <laughs> engaged with another man at this point. So mm -hmm. she, she was like, wow, you would do that? And I was like, yeah, like, he's from Kentucky. Like, we're never going to see him again. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I actually, like, enjoy talking to him. He's a cool dude. So, yeah. like, and he seems really open-minded. He's cool. So, like, let's, I'll ask him. I feel like I feel like he will be open to it because I've already told him a lot already. Mm-hmm. You know, and he still wants to come talking to us. So he's got to be interested in some kind of way. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So what I'd love to know from you, Jorge, like what gave you the ability or the confidence in yourself to be willing to go there for the first time, um, not really having experienced like that before threesome with your woman, like your partner and another guy. Um, were you fearful that you would kind of freak out? Or be jealous or any of that? Did you have those emotions coming up? Or were you like, kind of how you said, we're never going to see him again. This could be really fun. Was it a mixture of those emotions? So I'm never, like, I never not felt some type of jealousy. I always felt, even if it's like a little bit or like, you know, like I've always questioned like, hey, this guy looks better. 
me or is his dick better than mine or I don't know, whatever, you know, all of these mm-hmm. thoughts, you know, but um, I just always go back to try to understanding how I think and, you know, what we've already experienced with other women. And it's like, I know she's always jealous, you know, but it's like, she's not jealous for, you know, in my uh, personal opinion, when you, when you, when you're going to base it on my emotions and my feelings, she's, she has nothing to worry about. There's no reason for her to be jealous because I'm not trying to engage with this person to replace her. I'm just trying to have a little additional experience to my life, Mm -hmm. you know? urges so it's not taken away from her so like the other way around i just try to look at it the same way like she doesn't want to have this experience with this guy because she's trying to replace me with him Mm -hmm. she's just trying to do the same thing just have a little bit of fun with her life and have experiences so when i feel the jealousy i always just try to not react on them and just try to remember you know i I feel like one of my biggest personality traits is like being fair Mm. and and quality and like understanding so it's like mm-hmm. i always try to want uh, like i always want to give her the same freedoms that i want yeah that's yeah. beautiful so, so yeah. it's like if if um if i can't give her those if if i can't give her those freedoms i have no right asking for them mm. amen so cute yeah <laughs> i hope everyone listening is taking notes because this is quite beautiful to hear. And I, I love what you said, Jorge, like there's never been a time where you haven't been jealous and you do it anyway, because you're a multifaceted human and mm-hmm. you are able to have multiple emotions at the same time and hold space for a little bit of jealousy, a lot of excitement, a little bit of turn on probably, and that hunger for growth. Because that's ultimately what comes out of this is like the more you do it, the more you learn about yourself, you know? And it's like balancing that logic that you brought in of like, okay, I know that she's not doing this because she's trying to leave the same way I'm not trying to leave or replace her. We are doing this to add more to our lives together because ultimately what I heard you say earlier with the the reclamation sex, it's like so hot. So it's, it's always feeding your relationship in some way. Um, has the jealousy lessened over the years? Um, so I feel like, I feel like for Jetty, yes, it has. I feel like just because my level of jealousy has never really been that high, Mm -hmm. I don't feel like it declined. I still feel just the same amount of jealousy in situations. Yeah. You know, I always react to them well, so it's never really been like too big of an issue. So well. Like when he finally came clean about his jealousy, I was shocked. Because Jorge has never once shown me an ounce of jealousy. Like I used to get upset because I'm over here thinking like, wow, like this man doesn't get jealous. Like he does <laughs> not get freaking jealous. Like what the fuck? I love it. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Like, you're jealous. You're like crazy and possessive. You're not jealous. Do you have a pulse? Do you even want me? Right. We're so nuts. I love being a woman. (laughs) I know. Like, what's wrong with him? What's wrong with me? Like, why is he not jealous? I can't believe that. I had to make him jealous. (laughs) (laughs) So, when he finally came clean, I'm telling you, Jessica, I was just. I was like, you're lying. I'm like, don't say you're jealous just to make me feel better about my jealousy. And he's like, no, babe, like I am jealous. The only difference is I don't let the jealousy control me. Like you let your jealousy control you sometimes. Hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. How do you, how do you work with your jealousy and Oh my God. In so many ways. (laughs) (laughs) I, my jealousy is very complex. Um, I, sometimes I have to like fuck it out of me. Like I have to like, I'm feeling jealous. Like we need to fuck. Like you need to like really give it to me, boy, because like I got, <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. Like, <laughs> yeah, I love that. It's not weird. It's an amazing tool. Yeah. <laughs> jealous right now. Like, you know, I just, yeah, you need to like, give me, give me a good time. So that usually like that helps. Um, crying about it, feeling it, honestly, 
feeling it, telling him like, Hey, I'm feeling jealous. And he validates it and listens and, you know, he's there, his presence. And like, he doesn't shame me. Mm. Um, I read a lot about jealousy. I'm, I'm such a reader. I'm a nerd. So I love to read about like, why do we have these emotions? What is the purpose of this emotion? I've learned that the purpose of jealousy really is to teach you something about yourself and, and what you need. Um, it just is another emotion like happiness and sadness and anger. It's just a part. It's, it's part of the human experience to feel jealousy. Yeah. What any good books to recommend or like what have been your favorite uh, um, resources? So Opening Up is a really good book. I can't remember. I'm so bad with names, so I'm so sorry. I can't shout out the author. No worries. I'll link them all. I'll find them all and link whatever you tell me in the show notes. But Opening Up and The Ethical Slut is oh, yeah. really Amazing. Yeah, classic. Um, Any time that I come across an article on jealousy or like I'll hashtag it on Instagram or – watch jealousy videos of uh, psychological coaches or teachers on TikTok. Like, I'm just always consuming like information that is going to help me overcome my jealousy. And I, I will say it's gotten a lot better because there were trigger words that with Jorge would say them, jealousy would show up. Mm. Like, for instance, today he said one and she didn't show up. And I was like, yay! He said, uh, so... I was talking to a girl last night. Old me would have been like, this. oh my God. Hi. Right. <laughs> I love you know, it. Like, like, who is this bitch? No man. <laughs> um, but this time I was like, oh, okay. Like, so tell me about, you know, this chick. Like, I want to know. Like, it's, she shows up more curious now. Yeah. They were like, who do I have to fight? <laughs> yeah, that auto programming comes in strong, man. Oh.